Okay, so this Malibu we're working with, it is turbocharged. We know that we talked about some PIDs as far as turbocharger control, the charge air cooler, feedback information such as three different temperature sensors. Um, it is gasoline direct injection. We know that we want to go after the low side before condemning the high side of problems and typically a high side problem would be the high pressure pump. It will be a high rate fail item in GDI. It's already uh, becoming that and probably right behind it would be some individual failures of injectors. Uh, I want to cover because this engine another unique feature is that it is variable cam timing where to me fuel delivery to any engine uh, port injected or gasoline direct injected the most important PIDs are short term and long term fuel trim in variable cam timing you can see here we have desired exhaust camshaft position desired intake camshaft position. So we're going to have a camshaft position sensor on the exhaust cam and on the intake cam. So that information feeds the computer. We get to look at it. We can see right now the exhaust cam position is zero and the intake cam position is seven. From a performance standpoint, here's how we want it to work. As you're accelerating to build more cylinder pressure and to build more torque, you will advance the intake and retard the exhaust. That's the scheme that gets you the most power. That's taking advantage of the fact that the engine has variable cam timing. The most important PID is did the computer or did the cam timing mechanisms the phasers or whatever controls, whether they're electric controlled, hydraulically oil controlled, however they are, did they work? Did they do what the computer asked them to do? And that feedback information comes back as you can see here. We've got desired 07, exhaust cam position 0, intakes at 7. So right away we can look at those two numbers and go, hey, it's doing what the computer asked it to do. In fact, the most important PID to me, and what GM calls it, is exhaust cam or intake cam position variance. This number gets too far, you're going to end up with P0017, P0008. You're going to end up with variable valve timing trouble codes. But this is your high level indicator if you suspect, and it's not uncommon on a lot of GM vehicles, probably the worst one is the 3.6 engine um, for the timing chain to stretch. How do you know that it's stretched? Take the front cover off, measure the chain. No, you'd have to set it next to a brand new one and measure it. Look at the how far out the timing chain tensioner guide piston has moved outwards that that is an indicator some techs use but that requires the amount of labor to get the front of the engine tore down to see those things your best high level indicator is what is the variance in what the computer wanted and what it got and that's where these two pits come in is as you can see right now the computer wants the intake cam pass position at seven degrees and the variation from what it wants is zero. This is dead perfect. But as we move through different engine loads and modes of operation, we want to watch that variation. And more importantly, my best tip for you is to when you're at a steady throttle and you come out of that throttle, variation because that's where that chain slack is really going to, the backlash is going to come into play and we're going to see those variation numbers come into play. So if you have a high mileage or you suspect the customer really didn't change their oil like they should or use the correct oil or the correct viscosity or you just suspect maybe through another high level indicator such as a trouble code, 
your best place to go is camshaft variation. This is telling us what's the difference between what we wanted and what we got, or what the computer wanted and what it got. 